Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right. I welcome all of you. <laughs> <laughs> to this is how we started <laughs> the yeah, way yeah. to do Molly. We, it, the first the first 30 seconds we were both cracking up and I'm like what were we laughing about and here we are doing it again um <laughs> uh you probably haven't seen that on the broadcast have you but anyway dear friends uh, for those of you who are already um here and you've made your way through cyber traffic um mm -hmm. we welcome you to the aftermath of wait, the waiting room 2023. Um, we are going to give our friends just a, a few minutes or so to find their way here um, because we certainly would love, love, love to have a live and engaging audience. Amen. Yeah. So, my friend, you are not even at home. You are where? Tell us a little bit. Tell me where you are. So I am in my, what I call my hometown. Um, I was raised in, born in Kingston, Jamaica, but um, raised in Northampton, which is the middle of England, part of the Midlands. Um, and it's where I still call it home because my mom still lives here. And I spend quite a bit of time throughout the year coming and supporting her. Um, both of us are widows. And um, it's just a blessing to be able to spend time. And sometimes, Absolutely. yeah, sometimes it's just, my God, you've been here a week and we don't even play a game of Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> Mom has Scrabbles. Oh my goodness, that's cool. That's yeah, yeah. So to be able to join her for a game of Scrabble, I know that we, we really relaxed. And so, yeah, it's a real blessing. And um, can I share a puzzle? I didn't get around to telling you that um, I'm at a conference. That's what the question you asked me. Um, I'm at a, a four-day European conference, it's called. And so there are people here attending this event from... I think I remember France, New York, but Asian, um, India, um, Denmark, Holland, as well as the UK and the Caribbean, other places. But it, it's amazing. It's been such a blessing, such a blessing to see what people are doing around the world and to hear their reports and see the pictures and images and videos. And we're creative, as you know, but there's the Danish group. They did something I've yet to find out. It looks like, I'm not a Game of Thrones person, I know of it, and I think I've seen 10 minutes of it, but he decided his report this year, he would make a video. And my goodness, I had to keep looking like, is this, is this real? Or they got it from somewhere. Basically, I did a video, because we know the Vikings, the Danish, and his team, they dressed up like Vikings with helmets. And it showed him, I think he's the leader who's here. Um, they're about to go off. There's horses and everything, all the brown stuff that you'd see on these movies. And they're dressed to go on mission. And the reason I know it's real is because it has the title of the conference that we're at. And that's where they were coming. And so they're setting off on mission. And then the son, a boy comes with a, a helmet and he kneels and hands it to him. And he's like telling him to go away. He doesn't want it. And then his, his troops are saying, but that's the rules. You've got to wear the helmet. He says, no. It makes my scalp itch. He's supposed to be this strong warrior, but he was now confessing that he doesn't want the helmet. And then eventually he said, it messes up his hair. So that was the real truth. And then they had to say, but you have to wear the helmet of salvation when you're going into battle. And so it was just tremendous, but the creativity, it was just such a blessing. I'm, I'm enjoying myself, we're coming to the end. And um, it's just tremendous. So that's why we're here. And But the point I'm making with my mum, the connection is that, I met someone here that hasn't seen my mum since they were young. And he knew she'd moved to Northampton back in the 80s, but didn't know. In the 60s, he didn't realise she was still here. So I was able to take him today to meet with mum. And wow. they reminisced and talked and hugged. And then wow. he was praying for her and he paused his prayer and said, sing that song again. He remembers a song from back then. So mum mm. sang, I bowed on my knees and cried holy. And it was just tremendous. It's just uh, these bonuses. So your mom is at the conference? No, no, it's, oh, okay. um, no, yeah. But so that's me, short way of telling you I'm having an amazing time. Yes, I'm out yes. town, and, I, and I'm so glad that I mean, the body of Christ, right? It's not just us in the waiting room. The body of Christ really understands how using the arts can yeah. plow through all the barricades that people tend to have to receive in the gospel or to even understanding the message. Because mm -hmm. 
whether it's music or drama or, or poetry or painting, it speaks, they speak, they speak so clearly and so directly. So it's exciting to know that this is what you are experiencing Thank coming you. out of the waiting room. Mm -hmm. So here we are friends and, and um, um, others we would have wished could be with us, but other commitments, they cannot be with us, but you and I are here and we want to spend some time just reflecting on what we heard over the last, um, well, the 10 days we were in the waiting room from um, the 18th to the 28th, we climax on Sunday with a mm -hmm. Pentecost unity service. Um, I kind of want to jumpstart this because I truly believe that even as we see the example in the book of Acts, they did not leave the upper room empty. Sorry. They did not leave the upper room the way they entered. Mm -hmm. They did not leave the upper room the, the same way. As a matter of fact, the next chapter of Acts, Acts chapter three, Peter and John are going into the temple. Mm -hmm. And I believe if this man has been placed by this temple gate every day of his life, this is not the first time he's seen Peter and John. And this is not the first time John and Peter have seen him. But this time, something dynamic happens. Mm -hmm. He stretches out his hand to probably do what he's always done, which is give me some money, give me something to help me out, you know, give me some arms. And Peter looked at the man and had a boldness, had an authority that he would have received having waited in the presence of God. Amen. The same Peter who said, I don't know him. I don't know Jesus. The same Peter who cursed, the same Peter who swore and said, I don't know the man. Mm. The same Peter and John who ran away from the cross, ran away from the trial, ran away from what Jesus was walking through when he was um, heading to the crucifixion. That St. Peter looked at this man and said, silver and gold. We don't have that. Mm. By the way, I'm not going to confess that. I want to be able to say silver and gold I have, but you don't need my money. You need to know how to make your own. So get up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my I don't like that confession. So yeah. I'm not going to confess silver and gold I don't have. I'm going to say silver and gold I do have. Thank you, Jesus. You may want to yeah. just confess silver and gold I do have, but I have more than silver and yes. gold. And yes. this is what I want you to have, your healing. So now mm. you can make your own silver and gold. Mm. You can collect your own. How about that? <laughs> you know, there's a proverb I think that says, if you teach a man to... If you give a man a fish, they'll always want a fish from you. But if you teach a man how to fish, then mm -hmm. he has fish for the rest of his life. So yeah. Peter was able to, I see no, you want to say something. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask you that you talked about um, when they left, they came out transformed. And so part of the night that I shared, um, I was saying, what were they doing for those 10 days? You know, what were they arguing or saying who did what and who didn't do what and so now that you've talked about this remember they said look on us so what could have happened to them in that days you know in that 10 days of possible well jesus said wait until you endure with power that's the whole mm -hmm. point of waiting till mm -hmm. you are consumed by the presence of god till you're soaked and saturated mm -hmm. with god's power and presence now jesus mm -hmm. was with them for three years and he says mm -hmm. if i don't go the Holy Spirit can't come. So mm -hmm. when the Holy Spirit came, oh my mm -hmm. God, the third person of the Trinity now filled them through and yeah. through. Oh, glory to God. Somebody need to mm -hmm. lift your hands and understand what that means. Mm -hmm. That they were grieving that Jesus was leaving. He's like, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. I am here in physical form. I am here embodying flesh, mm -hmm. even though I'm God. I can't go to the bathroom with you. I can't go into the bed with you. I can't occupy the inner spaces of your world, but he who is coming after me, yes. he Hallelujah. who is going to be sent by the father will be with you day and night and night and day. And 
you will have him as your guide, as your, your counselor, as your, your friend, as your companion in life. The, the word for Holy Spirit is paraclete. Parakletos is the Greek. He is going to be your counselor. He's going to be one who walks alongside you. Oh, glory to God. Make the Holy Ghost your friend. Make the Holy Ghost your companion. Invite him daily. Holy Spirit, be with me. Guide me, lead me. Because he is here with us and he will teach us all truth. And so what Peter and the others experienced, my dear friend, is the, the infilling, the, in, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The word baptize, the Greek word is baptizo, which means to die. So if I had a white fabric, mm, if I had a white fabric, this is kind of close to white, and I yeah. dipped it in, in, in purple dye, when you mm -hmm. bring it up, the whole fabric now is changed into what it was put into. So the word mm -hmm. baptism, baptizo, baptizo Greek, is to baptize, to dip, to dye, to D-Y-E. <laughs> oh I'm about to do an experiment. You've inspired me. So I have some napkin here, paper tissue, and I was drinking some hibiscus tea. And I'm about to sacrifice my tea because it's cold. <laughs> we have this. So this come was, on, come on, come on, come on. Um, wow. Wow. So, now, so this, that's, that's partial. That's partial. Oh, okay. Well, if you don't mind messing your hand, give us the concept of how when completely immersed, Jesus, mm -hmm. come on, thank mm -hmm. you, my friend. That is creative mm -hmm. thinking that yeah. you immediately realize that hey i could demonstrate what you're saying apostle yeah yeah this is how we flowed isn't it and this is how we flow in the waiting room this is it and so it becomes normal for us that's what we're encouraging it becomes normal to flow and to hear god and to see god in any simple thing because he's and everywhere you know, i am that i am i am that i am i am that i am yeah and to express to hear to receive, mm -hmm. but also to express it. Amen. Because I yeah. believe the outflow of the waiting room is to now express what we've been hearing, to Amen. now demonstrate what we've been hearing, to now manifest, right? What we have experienced, yeah. my God. Totally. So totally. just like Peter and John were able to say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get yeah. up yes. and walk. We mm -hmm. are going to go up to some situations. Come on, get up, which means mm -hmm. if you've been in any form of paralysis or immobility or stagnation, we say to you, get up. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. don't just get up and stay immobile, stay stationary, walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says the man got up and he went leaping and walking and praising God. He was jumping up and down. He was ecstatic. You <laughs> cannot encounter the living God yeah. and be like stoic. I, I don't get that, my friend. Talk to me about that. Tell me what happened in your church on Sunday because oh, this, wow. this power of the spirit of God is not just in one locale. God is, God is saying, I am doing this throughout my body, throughout the earth, and let who has ears to hear, hear let, let the hearts that are open receive. Tell us what happened in your, your gathering on Sunday, sis. Yeah, so we had a special church, church weekend away, but at home. <laughs> and um, it's a lovely Pentecostal church, absolutely mixed congregation, ages and cultures, and, but quite conservative. As English and can be. <laughs> That's not unusual at all for the culture, for the culture. Yes. And then, but we had a guest speaker, a couple of guest speakers coming in. And one, he's a songwriter, worship leader, as well as a speaker. And um, he was wearing the headset throughout, you know, ready for when he was coming up. And it was switched on. So throughout the service of the gathering and the worship, you could hear him. And he has a rich voice. And so, first of all, there was already a, a new sound in the house while everything else was going on. And he would groan or he'd, mm -hmm, yes. And, and it just, it was lovely. It was a new sound. And then um, he then went up 
to speak. He was a speaker on the first night. And he was saying that he, he was quite happy. He was saying to God, you know, I'm quite happy to lay aside my notes and I could just stay here in the worship. I could just stay with the worship. And so he said he was watching the clock and thinking, oh, the time's gone. So maybe they are going to, maybe God's answered his prayer, he's saying. And then, but anyway, he was given time. He came up and then, so he started that way and he was clearly moved in the spirit. Um, you know, just gave time for the Holy Spirit to move. And so by the time he finished and encouraged and, shared it was there was just a flow and that was a Friday night and then we had the whole day Saturday and the speaker for the evening an Asian woman who lives in the UK she's like an old school my tradition out some of our traditions and so she you know it's call and response she will get them to to answer answer back because then they're, they're not used to that but she doesn't she will you know she's using volume and everything and she shared a lot of testimonies and lots of them about laughter and the Holy Spirit and how he's moved and the things that they've been involved in and whatever. And that was great. And there was so much laughter in her sharing and preaching. And then she handed to her husband to finish off. And he was, he came, he's an Asian, strong Asian as well. And he was laughing and doing whatever they did. And then the Holy Spirit, next thing with it throughout the church, the voice, the laughter, and it became, because they'd talked about, um, the, the minister from the Friday, he talked about um, going to being invited to the Vineyard Church back in the day. And he'd gone to speak to the youth. And he said he was touched then and the laughter and everything. So when it was his time to minister, he was still in that state. And the, the leaders had to bring him and prop him up against the wall so that he'd be able to preach. And he said, he just slowly slid down the wall and he was on the floor in a pile and it was like that and it went on for days. And so he was sharing that. And of course people were amazed and laughing throughout. So that laughter had already been to gather a little bit of bubbling. And so by the Saturday now we were hearing breakouts of laughter in the church and it was, I even I left and <laughs> people were still on the floor and laughing and, and everything. And then it spilled over into Sunday as well, Pentecost. And so, I know they hadn't really planned anything for Pentecost Sunday, and I was kind of like, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, God planned something. And so it's been an incredible weekend. And I'm pray my prayer is that as we go into this week coming, it will continue and let them, it'll be normal for it them. It would be normal. Yes, yeah. I believe it can be. And that's why we're doing this broadcast, because we want mm -hmm. all our, of those of us who've been in this journey, on this journey to know we don't turn the tap off now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We don't cut the line now. Mm -hmm. We don't leave his presence now. You know, uh, it was Minister Pope and she led prayer um, on, on Wednesday last week, encourage us to build personal altars. And that even when we leave, you know, the, the, the waiting room, we don't leave the place mm -hmm. of intimacy with the Lord. Yes. Yes. So we encourage you, do not leave the place of intimacy with God. But how can how can one, I think that's what we want to encourage people as well. How does one continue to have this level of, of, of intensity even, or, or intimacy maybe is a better word, with the Lord? Because sometimes I feel like we, we are people who, sometimes we're like spiritual junkies, right? So we get high on conferences, we get high on events we get high on you know particular moments or you know conventions or convocations and we we get high we get a spike and then yeah. there's a yeah. lull and yeah. we can't wait for the other spike and then there's a <laughs> lull but yeah. is is there is there a place or is it possible to have just a steady flow mm. in the presence of the lord so you can have your own constant waiting room well, that's an age old question worded differently because I think life gets in the way, but we always, we've often been asked growing up, I've heard the conversations. Why is it when we got to conference and we got to this special place, miracles happen and this happens and so-and-so. And my answer was always, my response was always, we were intentional. It often cost us money. Mm. we went you yeah. know like Maurice Sorello's in town and there mm. are other evangelists mm. Um, mm. and people would go and come back with tales and they'd see because they've gone with an expectation mm -hmm. they're going to witness something mm. and so we don't carry the problem is we don't carry that expectation mm. or intentionality through life and I think that's where we lose wow. 
So right. I think that's the key. If we right. start every day, we go to bed every day, you know, every night and pray and ask the Lord to do whatever. Mm. You know, if, I'm, if I'm waking every day, like I often say, okay, Lord, what's my adventure for today? Mm-hmm. You know, it's that having that communion because we, we check mm-hmm. our messages, usually some of us, several times a day. And some people first thing in the morning before prayer, whatever, to see if there's some communication that you have to respond to. Yeah. If somebody needs yes. And so if we, if we rewire our brain and our spiritual mind to wow. check in with that and wow. check, it is actually possible. And again, because we, how is anyone going to pray for 10 days? We said that first year without being bored or falling asleep. And we got the solution. The Holy Spirit gave us a download. And so we can, if we take that download and adopt, our, adapt our lives and our ways of doing it, and we see every opportunity, walking the children to school, walking the dog, if you like that kind of thing, whatever you're doing, and you're looking for opportunities to give thanks and looking for opportunities to be creative, like just then with the tea, the tea bag. Exactly, yeah, that, exactly. It is possible. You just have to have a want to. Wow. And I think that, that's the key. Wow. So that's what I, I hear desire. As soon as you said that, you have mm-hmm. to have a want to. I believe desire becomes the fuel mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. pursuing God's presence. How like that, hungry yeah. are you? Mm. How hungry are you? I always say you don't have to tell a hungry man, go eat. That's or right. a thirsty person, drink. Mm-hmm. So how strong is my desire for more? Yes. What's the capacity that I have created for more? Mm. Because life, you're right. Life does happen. And that's why I changed the word intensity, because we Mm. don't always have the same level of intensity, but you Mm. can have the same level of intentionality, no matter what. So yes, yes, I may be dealing with, um, you know, someone in the hospital right now, and I've got to go visit every day. And I've got Mm. to, you know, do multiple tasks right now, because, you know, that that changes probably mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. I am engaging in with the Lord. Or, or I might be in a course right now. I might be doing a studies for six months or a year. And my goodness, I'm trying to get the assignments done. That mm-hmm. could change. So mm-hmm. we want to be realistic about yeah. where you are in life. The season you're in might, mm-hmm. might determine, does determine rather, how you engage. However, mm-hmm. if you're intentional, I heard Priscilla Shire, who is a, a worldwide speaker, international mm-hmm. speaker, talk mm-hmm. about, you know, with having her three boys and raising, her, her, raising them when they were younger, how she would put a scripture verse because she don't have time to do an all long devotion. And she would put a scripture mm-hmm. verse on on an um, index card and mm-hmm. she would just have that on her dashboard or, you know, she'll, she'll just repeat that scripture and, and ponder that scripture for the week. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's it's not... I think part of it, sis, is letting go of ooh, um, paradigms or religious structures that have prevented us from just being free and creative with the Lord. Yes, yes. Because certainly when I go walking, I am engaging with God. And when, mm-hmm. I, when I'm driving, I'm engaging with God. Whatever you're doing, learn this. I'm learning this from Dr. Alicia Britt Chole, who is, I mean, her mentoring program for a year. And she talks a lot about doing it with Jesus. Mm-hmm. What a concept. That will keep you in the flow all the time. So yeah. I am going to cook. Let's, come on, Jesus, we're going to cook. Come on, you're going to take care of that grandchild. We're doing this together. I'm going to take care of mom. I'm going to this conference. It's me and Jesus. And once I embrace that, my friend, here's what I start doing. I get in the car and I'm like, Jesus, do you want music or you want silence? Because now I realize I am not alone. Wow. Wow. I'm not alone. So I'm doing this with him. And he may very well want to say some things to me in silence. Or he may want me to hear a particular song. So what is it he wants? And... And I think what well, might have been this morning, I was kind of like, um, oh, I want to go walking. I want some sun, you know, me before I come onto the broadcast, you know, are we going to do it now, Lord, or should we wait later? And I, I end up going this morning, you know, it wasn't a long one because of the, the fullness of my day, but learn to invite Jesus mm. in all you do. Mm. Wow. In all you do. That, that to me is profound. Mm-hmm. Jesus, let's go chase sunsets. Yes, yes, yes. 
So Apostle, I'm just imagining that what you've just said, this is the first time I'm having this thought, so yay, thanks Jesus. Um, imagine, because you've done what you've done, or you do what you do, the next person you meet, or a phone call, or somebody asks you, you're able to make an immediate reference. So like, oh, I was just talking to Marlene, and she said, imagine, oh, yeah, I was just... And the Lord told me today, can you imagine if that's how we answer, or how are you, how's your day been? Actually, it was rough, but you know, having Jesus with me and I, ta -ta -ta, and he told me this and it's fresh, fresh bread, fresh out the oven, fresh. That must, that must be um, incredible. Yeah. So oh my, my friend, somebody go ahead and put that in the comment section for me. Do it with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Do it with Jesus. Do all you do with Jesus in that way, you live with intentionality and you live with expectancy because the truth be told to keep the fire hot in any relationship, you've mm -hmm. got to figure out, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? That's why some couples have date nights <laughs> so that you keep the no. fire in your relationship. No. You got to fan the flames. I grew up, you're looking for something else to be creative. No. Well, I to say <laughs> a bag, I drew a bag that's Jesus and Marlene. Let me run and get it. <laughs> so um I I um my friend took my thoughts. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my goodness, but I don't Forgive remember me. what I was gonna say. But no, I, you were saying put it in the chat, Jesus and yeah, um, do it with Jesus, do it, do it, do it with Jesus. Jesus, do it with Jesus. And mm -hmm. I, I was talking about just being expectant, just being yeah. intentional, just just believing that. He wants to say something to me now. He wants to engage with me. He wants mm -hmm. my attention. He wants to pour out. He wants all the time. You mm -hmm. don't have to wait for the spikes mm -hmm. of the waiting room and the conference mm -hmm. and the convocation mm -hmm. and the retreat. You know, you can perpetually live in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, years ago, I, I embraced that practice the presence of God, which means I live with a consciousness that he's with me in the moment, in mm. every moment. Learn mm. to see Jesus in your everyday mundane moments. Because mm -hmm. we, we think he's, hmm? You were saying something about date nights. Yeah, That's what you were yeah, about. yeah. But share with us what you brought, what you went to get. No, it's, um, I'm it's away. It's tucked away, it's too far away. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but it's okay. a picture of me because I thought when you were talking about do it with Jesus, my children's ministry back in the day was Jesus and me, Jam. That was our children's ministry. And then that reminded me, I did a sketch recently and it was me walking arm in arm with Jesus. And I had a bag on my shoulder. You know, you have the label of a shop or something, a store, and it had on the bag, it has Jesus and Marlene. <laughs> sort nice. of, you know, like a, that's the bag I'm carrying nice. and my arm is linked with so that picture came back. So you can imagine what the picture yes, looks like. Yes, yeah, but that's yes. a lovely. I love that. Do it with yes. Jesus. Do it mm. with Jesus. Do it with Jesus. And um, one of the, the, the topics that Apostle Francois, who shared the waiting room with us, um, talked about was inquiring from God. Lord, what is it you want me to do? So you use the term check in check in mm -hmm. we are checking in on our phones often we're checking to see what messages we miss what messages we need to respond to how about if we do that as frequently with god oh, you know man. check in with god lord what are you what what is your what is your thought about this lord what am i supposed to do how do you want me to respond to this lord what 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 is it if we live with intentionality if we lived with expectancy and if we constantly check in with God I believe we can keep the fire oh I now know as I said fire so I grew up um uh, with coal pots you have no idea what that is Marlene because you left Jamaica when you were four and I always tease you that you ain't no Jamaican because say it was not till you were an adult that you went back <laughs> I they say so. back home they say you throw a stone behind your back but anyway <laughs> Um, I'm glad that you, you've gone back once or twice. Twice. Okay. In, like, way up, like 40 years. And I later. think you came to Antigua before you went to Jamaica, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. But anyway, yes. and you've gone to St. Lucia. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can say you've been to the Caribbean quite a few times, but we, you know, it's a cold pot. 
Yes, I have a vision. Yeah. Okay, you have a vision. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pot that sits on coals. Nespa. Nespa. I am not going to call my children's name because they're going to get me. So when we had Hurricane 204, um, um, I'm going to give it away by because where I was, right? So okay. mom and I, mom and I, um, the mother and I had remembered, oh my gosh, this, this gentleman had given them a coal pot made from concrete. So back home in my country, they made it from, from clay and they'd bake the clay. And so it was this, you know, and it had like um, the arch that the, the, the allowed the wind to go up to the coals. And then you put the pot on top of the coals, Marlene. So it was, yes. So anyway, um, I'll probably post a picture on my page so you can see what a coal pot is. So That's anybody true. who's maybe techie savvy, maybe you might want to find a coal pot and just put it in the comment section. But anyway, um, these, these girls thought, ooh, mommy and, uh, and pastor lit the coal. So they, we just left ashes because the few coals we found was done. And they, we came back and we met a bunch of mat sticks on the patio floor. Why? Like, why? What happened? Oh, they didn't know you needed coals. And so the older one said after a while, she said, coal, hot, <laughs> <laughs> light, bulb. Oh, anyway, wow. so the, the, the point I want to make though, I just, that was just me going off track there. Um, we would take you know, a piece of cardboard mall, and we would go mm. to the arch of the coal pot. Because if no breeze is blowing, the yeah. fire, the fire is going to take forever. And if you're hungry, you want this fire blazing so that the pot could go boiling and you could get your meal cooked. Yes. I lear I've learned over the years to fan the flames. Right. Fan the yeah. flames. So You've been into the waiting room and you know that some calls caught, some things happened, something was yeah. ignited. Don't mm -hmm. sit on this. Fan the flames, fan the flames by go rehearsing what you heard, writing down what you heard, talking about it with somebody else, praying over what you heard, asking God what the next steps need to be. What do I need to do now with what I have received? Fan the flames by actively engaging in steps or action steps or implementation steps that you must now do as a result of being yeah. in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you know that you, you because of where you are at the conference, uh, Minister Moline, um, I invited those on our prayer platform this morning, um, every Wednesday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard mm -hmm. Time, mm -hmm. we host uh, a time of prayer. And you are there many, many Wednesdays and others as well. So it's, it's a constant uh, flow for many of us. And so yeah. today I asked the ladies to share, and by the way, the brothers are invited, but I asked yeah. the sisters to share um, just what the waiting room um, meant for them or what is it they heard. It was profound. Oh, wow. One individual said, Possible, I'm not waiting for you because I talked to her about us forming an inner tribe, an orbit of, of really cheering each other and holding. She's like, I'm ahead of you. I have begun to write a chapter a day of my book. Wow. Another person said, I have um, returned to a course that I kind of put on the back burner because I was in physical ache and pain and aches and pain. And she said, I have gone back to the course and I have actually uh, done some of the, the modules. Um, wow. Another individual said, you know, I heard I should write a song, but I'm like, write a song, uh, write a song. <laughs> and apparently I showed up in the dream, gave them some instructions. They got up from the dream, took pen and paper and they have begun to write the song. I am just, yes, I'm excited to, oh my goodness. One person said, I heard, through you, Apostle, and through Apostle um, Francois, specific words, and they said, I know who God was telling me I needed to pray for, and I've been, I've been given the strategy on what to do. Oh, I can't, I am so excited. That's what we're talking about, manifestation. 
Yes. The outflow of the waiting room that we're not just sitting on what we heard. We're not just saying, oh, this was so good. This was so exciting. Oh, the mm-hmm. Lord blessed us in the waiting room. We know we want to know mm-hmm. that by this time next year, there yeah. are lots of little toddlers, like my, my friend, Pastor Heather said, running around. Why? Because we gave birth. And if yeah. we gave birth by next year, these things are one year old. Or if they've been mm-hmm. birthed before the waiting room or just, just got more of an injection to, to keep growing, then yeah. we're going to see two-year-olds and three-year-olds of in terms of our giftings, our creativity our businesses our the creative concepts the lord etched on our spirits we're going to see them blooming mushrooming because we have been attending consistently Mm -hmm. and diligently to what we heard Mm -hmm. i am excited my friend a manifestation wonderful manifestation and so before I go today, before we go today, there's one thing that I felt strongly I should do as a result of um, calling people. I'm the visionary of the, the waiting room and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, I can't leave people just being excited and stimulated. I want to make sure that people have the tools they need. And mm-hmm. some don't need what I'm, what I'm offering. Some are ahead of the game. Some already mm-hmm. know how to do this. Some are living this out. But if mm-hmm. you're one of those who feel like, Apostle, I need help. I need some guidance. I need some supervision. I need some mentorship. I need someone who is going to help me say, these are the tracks to run on so that you don't come back next year mm-hmm. and say, uh, I didn't produce anything. Oh. Jesus. Because you know that the master came to the servants to give for them to give account the one who had a talent one who got two talents one who got five and harsh rebuke and punishment for the one who said i was afraid and so i buried my talent my friends god is not going to take lightly us dishonoring what we've been given Mm-hmm. So I'm calling all of us, including myself, mm-hmm. to greater levels of stewardship, greater levels of commitment to what God has placed within us. We heard during the waiting room, bring your five loaves and your two fishes, because if God blesses your five loaves and your two fishes, multitudes will be fed. God mm-hmm. wants to feed someone. And I heard from your hands, my God, from your hands. Okay. Mm-hmm. So write these dates down. I know, Maul, you will not be able to attend because you will be attending as mother of the groom. My goodness, a third of your children. Fourth? The fourth one. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow, wow. You're going to be an empty nester soon, beloved. Oh, I know. Um, maybe, maybe that might not be a bad thing. I get to see you more often. <laughs> i'm gonna count my blessings in advance (laughs) but june 23rd and 24th and we may do a repeat right so don't worry my friend that we'll come back to this Mm -hmm. i would invite you to come to this virtual space we will do a short session on the 23rd which is the friday um we're gonna start at seven and we will do seven to eight thirty an hour and a half because I want to, us to deal with the barriers, the barriers to us um, advancing into what we know God has called us to do. Mm-hmm. I don't, I can't promise you that you're going to get delivered and healed in an hour and a half. But what I promise you will happen is that your eyes will open and hopefully you'd be provoked to say, God, show me where the healing mm. happened. Guide me to the place or to the person that I need to connect with so that I continue this healing journey. And then the, the Saturday, we may start around 10 and we will probably go f- until one. And I'm thinking of having three sessions, my friend. I want to talk about, I want to I want to sh- guide people into the process of writing their vision. Sorry, their mm-hmm. mission statement. Uh, many persons have never done that in life. Um, we want to help people in another session to clarify and crystallize their vision what is it that you know god is saying to you to do 
And then we want to conclude the day with what are some action steps that mm -hmm. you're going to take as a result. So it's going to, it's going to be very simple. It's not going to have a whole lot of breath because we're talking about just a couple of hours, a few hours, but it's going to be enough to give you a jump start and a head start, to give you a jump start and a head start. So plan, mark your calendars, June 23rd and 24th, we are going to have what we're calling GPS. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to pull out God's GPS, God's plan for success. And we're going to share in simple ways how you can move from where you are towards the future God has designed for you. I hope you plan to be here and we'll share with you later how you can register for GPS. Yeah, so it sounds like it's going to be an interactive. Yes, it's going to be interactive. So, yes, um, you're going to need to bring your supplies with you and it's go. The creativity is going to be part of what we will do in this room. And, you know, my friend, I did this um, in January, January with, with my people, Kingdom Life, at Kingdom Life Center. I was teaching on vision and I realized, oh, I don't want to just stimulate people and say, hey, got to have a vision. And this is how you have a vision. I want to, I want to make sure that people had a personal vision. Mm -hmm. People understood their personal mission because the clearer mm -hmm. I am, on what my mm. personal mission is, the yeah. clearer I am on what my personal vision is. Then when I come to the collective, when I come to the corporate, I flow mm. better. I fit better because yeah. I know who I'm, what I'm designed to be. And sometimes when we have friction in the flow, when we have mm. confusion in churches, because people lack clarity on where yes. they fit, they bring yeah. their own stuff and they think, pastor, you need to do this, you know? <laughs> Years ago, I had a lady, she, she was never a member, but she visited for a while. She always had something else she was telling me I needed to do. I mean, she was. And so you have people like that. They, they, they don't ask themselves, you know, God, how do I fit into the collective? How do I fit into the corporate? They're trying to get the corporate to fit into their vision. That's not how it works. So um you want to plan on um being in these sessions and um because my friend you have been uh, such a companion on the journey with me because you have given you have given you have poured out you have showed up and showed out so many times i will ensure that you are going to receive um what others will have um one-on-one -on -one, right make sure we will, we, yeah. I promise you that, right? So even yeah. though you would not be with the live, we'll make sure you don't miss out on what is shared during that time. All right, um, let's before, pray. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, before you pray, just now what you, you said something and it dawned on me that what people are going to get on that weekend, as you said, it will solve it. And because you talked about this lady in the past, um, what, what they'll get won't just help with the vision and their plans and their future, whatever, but it... it it helps settle, it can transform our personalities in that something that we've been tripping over or on our jobs. And why do we get on? Oh with my them? goodness. Oh my goodness. Big time. You know, it sounds like, because if we get those bits right, because what I'm gonna, where I am today, I've, I've had, I've been growing since the waiting room as well. I've been giving birth and I've come I don't want to talk about it until I actually do it, but I'll, I'll be vulnerable and I'll share that with you. So one of the things, um, a woman that was ministering today and she said, we need to be the answer a question. We need to be an an a question answered or whatever. I, I wrote it down. I've not got it clear now. And I, I got flipped right back to 2000, the year 2000, when I heard clearly from the Lord that I had to look around. It was so strong that you are now. In, speak up, speak up. Yeah, it said you are now in full-time ministry. When the need arises, make a tent. Wow. I heard that in the year 2000 and I was excited and I told a few people. Yes, then life you told happened. me too. <laughs> yeah. And I had, I've not remembered for a long time and today because of what something the minister said and it gave me so much clarity because I, I found that I was getting upset. If people ask me, what do you actually do? A simple question like that could draw me to tears because I was frustrated that I didn't have a solid answer. Yes, I'm Marlene Greaves, speaker, teacher, trainer. But that what do you do, that one thing or that whatever. And so I shared that with the 
leader today and I said I'm really I feel so blessed having been here just for that and he said well that's the answer when people ask you I'm in full-time ministry and then when they want to know what it looks like that's when you then roll out all the things that you do because I said it just I sound a little weird like this or this that and so yeah it will help our emotion and our everything if we get this yes. right Yes. yes, I love that. Thank you for saying that, because that's the truth. As a matter of fact, I have, you know, I probably have some of the, the, the people who went through this for four, four, four sessions um, share their stories, because many are saying the, the, those who committed to the journey are saying, oh, my goodness, I have such clarity. And you're talking about people in their 70s, even who are like, yeah. oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. I know what I came on earth to do. It's clearer now. And you just wish that people had that at 20 and 25 and 30 and 40 and 50. But hey, whatever stage you're at, it's never too late. You can say like Caleb, give me the mountain, God. And if he gives you the mountain, he'll give you the, the strength to climb the mountain. Your strength will be as good today at 75 as if you were 35. So don't, don't discount yourself. God mm. is God and he can give you strength at whatever stage you are to fulfill the assignment. We don't want mm. you to leave the earth empty. We don't yeah. want you to leave the earth with any unfinished task. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to leave the earth with any unfulfilled dream. And so by God's spirit, I said to you, lift your hands right now. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you for the waiting room. And I thank mm -hmm. you for the outflow of the waiting room is manifestation. Manifestation of years of of, of dreams that have been in, in waiting, in incubation. I declare even now that God, we are going to attend Mm. with diligence and yes. with consistency to what you've told us to do. We are going to invite others on the journey with us and ask them to hold us accountable. God, we will not try to fly solo. We are so committed to this, God, that we are going to look for those of like um, spirit, kindred spirit, to journey with us, God. We are going to ask for help when we need help. We are going to do the research when we need to find out answers, God. We are going to look to others to mentor us who have gone ahead of us and have gone higher than we have gone. Father, we just declare now that this, the time for excusing ourselves, Jesus, and for settling is over. It's mm -hmm. over. That God, we have been provoked to pursue purpose. And just like Elisha, burned the field, cut up the oxen, and ran after Elijah. We declare now, Lord, that we cannot go back to what was. We cannot find the path backwards. And so even now, God, we, we say, we receive what you are mantling us with. Yes. Come on, somebody. You may want to just uh, prophetically put your, like you're putting on a shawl. Lord, we receive what you are mantling us with. We receive it, Lord. Amen. Jesus, Hallelujah. spirit yeah. of the living God on Sunday, when, when we were off of Facebook and we were still in the sanctuary and the glory of God hit some of us, hit me anyway, and mm. others were just praying with me and over me. I went for what you saw as the background, the, the mm. nations, the flags of the nations. Mm. And I wrapped myself, my friend, in that banner because it was a reminder to my spirit. To me, I have been called to the nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Remind yourself of who God says you are and walk mm. consistently, yeah. steadily in the calling, in the Amen. anointing, in the yeah. gifting, and in the grace God has given you. In the coat and in that coat of many colors. Wow. I heard my spirit heard that and in that coat and make no excuses for the coat you've been given. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Protect the coat you've been given. Mm -hmm. Guard what has been entrusted to you. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Make no apologies. Make oh. no apologies. Wow. Make no apologies. Amen. Stop Hallelujah. the excusing of yourself and others. And by the way, I've come to realize many, many degrees that when I live out loudly, 
mm-hmm. who God has called me to be. I give others permission to do the same. Yes, hallelujah. Because somebody's watching you, beloved. Somebody is being influenced by you. And when you mm-hmm. choose to say, no more excuses, no more yeah. sitting on my giftings, no more mm-hmm. burying my talents, I will get yeah. up mm-hmm. and I will walk steadily in my mm-hmm. purpose and in my calling. I declare yeah. your time has come and your time mm-hmm. is now. Advance, Amen. my dear friends. Advance, Amen. advance in Jesus' name. <laughs> I am going to continue to plow the ground here. I believe, you know, next week, if God's, God permits, and I have uh, my, my others who can join, my other sisters who can join me, I mean, to do this because I feel like this is so helpful to engage. So I thank you. Thank you yes. for taking some time from your, your conference um, schedule to come and sit with me and, and share with me. And I, I, I celebrate who you are and I celebrate who you're becoming because I know we have constantly provoked each other. And yeah. I think the provocation is going to become more intense. So get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Heaven bless we, you. you know, we got to love each other too much to let us not do all that God called us to Indeed. do. Indeed. And I, I, I want you to love me that way. I know you do. And I want to love you the same way. So Amen. God bless you, dear friend. And all those Amen. of you who have watched um, the broadcast, thank you for being here. Amen. Do me a favor before you go. Share the broadcast. Yes. Like the broadcast. And I invite you to come back and watch the replay or go over to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to Sandra Valentine Ministries. YouTube channel and share this and the past videos of the waiting room. For those of you who are hearing about the waiting room for the first time, you are welcome to go and watch the replays, whether here on my Facebook page or um, over at uh, the YouTube channel, Sandra Valentine Ministries. God bless you and look out for the registration information for our God uh, GPS uh, sessions, God's plan for success, June 23rd and 24th. God bless you. And we'll see you sometime soon.